So to stage four of the Santos Tour Down Under with two days to go to the finish on Sunday. This time, 138 kilometers between Norwood Parade and Victor Harbour, the furthest point away from the city of Adelaide for the riders on this World Tour event. Simon Gerrans in Oka after his brilliant win into Campbelltown yesterday. And now his whole team massing at the front as they rolled away towards the first challenge of the day, which would be a sprint at Mylor after 27.6 kilometers. The peloton got off to a very, very high speed, but always under the control of the white jerseys of Gerrans's Orica Greenhead squad. Then came the sprint, the chase for a three-second time bonus. Michael Woods looked good in the lime green, and then through on the inside came Simon Gerrans in the race leader's jersey. Challenged by the erstwhile leader in red, Jay McCarthy, Simon Gerrans three seconds in the bag, increasing his lead by a single second over McCarthy, who got two. Little smile there on the face of Jay. Once going into the countryside, then bound for Goolwa, there was a three-man breakaway settling in nicely, as this breakaway contained David Tanner, Pat Shaw and Alexi Goujar. Goujar no danger overall, having lost 17 minutes in this race so far. Tanner and Shaw have both lost 96 seconds. Nonetheless, there was more at stake. The race were now continuing to chase through the Powerade hydration station, and then the chase would begin. Out into the open countryside now on long straight roads, the breakaway at one stage over four minutes ahead, the main field now closing in. The gap was just over a minute and a half. It wasn't just the white jerseys of Green Edge either who were willing to set the pace. Everybody was. 1.45 the leaders were shown as they were approaching Gulba. This would take them through the 100-kilometre point of 138. These three riders, well, they didn't need the seconds, but Pat Shaw decided he wanted the three seconds and also a little prize on the line in the II net sprint. It was the beginning of the end for this three-man breakaway as they were exiting Gulwa, the field were closing in, charging round the famous right-hand bend at the other end of the town. They were now lining up for the only climb of the day up Crow's Nest, they would top out just 20 kilometers from the finish. They now had their quarry in their sights. Onto the lower slopes of the climb, and the whole field were right behind the three leaders. Desperate moments by Gouger would come to naught. Now it was a case of racing for the top, but the climb was placed only 20 kilometers from the finishing line. So they knew now, if they kept the pressure on, they would rid themselves of the sprinters. Richie Port, second in this race, number four last year, was tackled on the climb by Sergio Hainan, who increased his lead in the Subaru King of the Mountains competition. The Colombian now was being followed by approximately 40 riders, and those trying to rejoin were involved in an accident. No one seriously hurt, except they would lose time on the day. Under pressure, the main field swelled to about 50 riders on the very fast rundown towards Victor Harbour. One kilometre out, and it was a battle of the sprinters. Simon Gerrans, the winner yesterday on the left, was again showing a fine pair of sprint legs, beating Ben Swift of the Sky Team to the line. Gerrans taking a 10-second win bonus, and Jake McCarty there just getting through but missing out on the bonuses. So Gerrans had increased his overall lead in this race. There seems to be no stopping Simon Gerrans at the moment, a rider who's now gone back to back, bringing his stage wins historically to five. A lot of people tend to forget that on your day, you can be one of the fastest men in the world. Oh, geez, I don't know. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled with that. Um, I think uh, I've caught a few people by surprise there, myself included. We've had a really good run into the finish. Um, as you guys saw, the team, uh, what they were able to do today, set me up for that first intermediate sprint, and then again for the final. Um, they're really making my life as easy as possible. 13 seconds advantage. Does that mean you can look forward to tomorrow's stage at Wollonga Hill in a little bit more comfortable style, or you've still got to be attentive? 
Oh, I still have to be very, very attentive going into Wollonga tomorrow. It's still, uh, you know, we've got a nice little buffer there, but um, there's still a heck of a lot of work to be done. Well, I'm not sure that I can remember you winning two stages back to back in a Santos Tour Down Under like this. Uh, the form must be right here on spot for the final weekend of the Santos Tour this year. Yeah, that's right. I, I really worked hard uh, for this year's event, um, put in a big pre-season, um, and uh, so it's really nice that all that hard work starting to pay off. Such a modest cyclist and so underestimates yeah, his own Timothy ability. Gentle, Simon Goins, yes, it was the first time any rider in this Simon race has gone back to back like that in two stages at this stage oh, of oh, the tour. Simon Goins saluting a large crowd in Victor Harbour earlier in the day. 6,000 cyclists have taken part in the Bupa Challenge. And a second day, the only man to do this this week is to defend his lead overall, so he gets a second Oka jersey with the weekend to come. A fourth possible victory in this race is literally just around the corner. Absolute perfection. He needed to. He is your leader. The Oka leader of the...